my own business is interviewing other people that are part of the tribe so we can find people who connect with each other and grow and just share our abundance. So welcome. Thank you. How are you doing? Good. The connection's great. Sometimes with this, there's a bit of a lag, but we're doing good. And um, I love where you are. You Tell us where you are. You're at a log house. Yeah, it was uh, with Veterans for Healing. So they have a log home that people can rent out in Airbnb and all the proceeds go back to the not-for-profit group. Veterans for Healing, which is like their peer support, all their retreats and holistic healing. So I'm out here today because we actually had a group out here this weekend. So I'm going to tidy up a bit and... Yeah, and just enjoy it. It's so peaceful. It's like down this little road, right in the woods, right on the water. It's pretty. Oh, gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah, so before we get started, Julianne and I met through our yoga teacher training. And, of course, we both know um, kind of your vibe attracts your tribe. And we stuck like glue ever since then. It was probably four or five years ago now that we met. Uh, uh, and our love keep moving in alignment. So this is wonderful that we're chatting and it's been my pleasure getting to know you and your business. So I'm excited to chat about Nourish and you've been involved for many years with Nourish. So um, I'm excited to chat about it and help whoever we can with growing their businesses and creating um, your dream life and turning that your reality, um, creating this life that we absolutely love without burning ourselves out. And of course, working smarter, not harder. So I'll let you guide the conversation. Um, I'm going to take my hat off and just <laughs> and answer what you would love to hear. Awesome. So when did you create Nourished? And what was your initial desire with your business when you created it? So Nourish actually was a hobby business that I started with one of my good friends um, as a subscription box business. Um, working in the nutrition industry, I always had a side hustle or consulting business. So, um, that was not new to me to start a business. And my friend, she really wanted to have a business. So out of on Christmas Eve, we were chatting about what we could do. And at that time, quarterly nutrition boxes were really hot. So long story short, we started a box company where we shipped seasonal, um, supplements, snacks, and superfoods out. Uh, fast forward to today, I'm still using that logo and that brand um, but our business is completely global because packing boxes is not sustainable. It didn't align with my global vision of being able to work from wherever. So the boxes went and we transformed that brand into an online hub where we have systems, um, products. I have my own snack line. So basically it, I took it from a physical, um, business to completely automated and leveraged, which as you mentioned, you noticed. And so that's what I do now is I teach other people how to do that. So I'm all about, we start businesses because we want our time freedom, right? We want to do what we want. Um, so for me, I couldn't do what I wanted if I was going to be packing boxes each season. So um, I'm proud to say that's how it started. And it's evolved into this crazy, amazing, automated, leveraged system online. And I'm now... I originally created it to have the freedom for myself, but now I'm, I'm teaching other people how to have their own freedom because just like, you know, it owning a business can be hard. And the more we can kind of create systems and automate things, the more freedom we have, which is usually why people get into business in the first place. Yay to freedom. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's like every entrepreneur's intention right there. Yes. Um, so yeah, I guess you got to answer how a little bit that it has evolved since then, but how exactly has it evolved since then and what does it look and feel like now? Yeah. Um, so really whenever I get stuck in business or don't know <clears throat> what to do or revenue is not being generated, I take a step back and I make sure that every decision is made from a place of does this fall in alignment with my global visions? I'm not making um, a decision on money. I'm not doing it for the money, that sort of thing. So when I started Nourish, it was more of like, it was kind of selfish. It was like, I want to go see my family at home in BC. I want to do what I want, what I want. Um, I want to have the freedom. So it's evolved into, it's way bigger than me now. And it's 
teaching people how to have that freedom. And Nourish um, stands alone as a business, and it's completely automated. And in a sense, it's kind of my business card now for other health coaches that want to do what I did. But that's the main evolution within me as the business owner. Um, once upon a time, it was to have my own freedom. Now it's to help health coaches have their freedom. So that's the the biggest shift in me. I always talk about you're, you're the brand. And as big as Nourish is going to get, I'm still connected to that as the brand. So the evolution has been... Um, I'm completely hands off now. I, I used to be, you know, facilitating all the programs. Now it stands alone. It's completely automated, which allows me to take my energy into helping other people do it for their own brands. So that's the main evolution that's happened. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Hey, Nicole, <laughs> let us know where you're joining from. Are you in Guatemala or Costa Rica? <laughs> oh, I love Costa Rica. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm like, say that you're there so we can live vicariously through you. We'll see where she is. <laughs> to your question, so that's the evolution of um, Nourish, is it went from kind of a hands-on nutrition company, lots of physical stuff, to completely automated, completely online, completely global, so I can help more people. And instead of me helping all the customers now, I'm leading the leaders to help their own customers. So in a sense, we're reaching way more people awesome it's a i love that way of thinking because i used to always be stuck in like i need to do it all myself and then that's how it'll get everywhere but really like the more you can kind of let the universe help it grow and bring other people in and use online is really reach more people to grow that tribe so as a yeah. Lesson for me, so it's good that you've learned it so early in life. <laughs> yeah, and it is as business owners, we want to control everything. But if you look back at your vision or why you're doing this, and if your vision is to help as many people as you can, well, think about all the people you help if you led the leaders instead of you just helped the people, right? Mm hmm. Um, so we talked a little bit about how like we're growing more into a bit of a tribe. And I see lots of welcome so-and-so, welcome this person as an ambassador. And can you talk a little bit more about that, about what that tribe is, what that means when we see that on your page, and also how people can join in that tribe? Yeah, so I'm proud to say Nourish was grown from collaborations and partnerships. So um, this is something that within marketing or whoever's doing getting your product visible more people, the better, right? So what I did from the very start with Nourish is I had an ambassador program. So people basically got to do our programs for free, you know, eat our bars, take our supplements in exchange for sharing the Nourish love. So that's what I did with the Nourish ambassador program is I offered people Nourish bucks or commission to spend on more, more products. So the best way to sell and market something is to just share your experience. So you know, it can get kind of old if I'm just doing my own programs and sharing that. People are like, oh, it's Steph again. She's exercising. She's eating smoothies. <laughs> but can you imagine if each one of our 25 ambassadors goes on their own page and shares what we're doing at Nourish? And there is a sense of, again, that leverage. They don't have to make their own programs. They don't have to, you know, set up all the systems like I did. They just get to share what they love. So mm. that definitely how Nourish grew and um, the best part is and I'll tell you learn from my mistakes so originally when I took ambassadors on I kind of let them offer our whole suite of stuff but then it got kind of confusing and the more you offer the more chances your client isn't going to buy anything because they get paralyzed or they're like well what do I do there's way too much stuff so now when I take ambassadors on they're only allowed to promote one thing at a time so for example Ryan okay. our newest or she's uh, what I do is I ask a series of questions and in worksheets and, and dig out of the ambassador what why they came to me in the first place to ask to join. So Ryan, for example, she loves fitness and that's what she wants to promote. So she's just an ambassador for a fitness program. Um, the Beautiful Body Cleanse, for example, if somebody goes through the Beautiful Body Cleanse, um, like Laura, she's a yoga teacher, she loves it, that's going to be her main product. So that how I grew kind of the Get Nourished Tribe, if you've seen that, if um, I welcome people on, you and I have partnered, so that's mm -hmm. what I mean, 
this tribe and the more people we get speaking the language, the more reach we're going to have. And as a business owner, it's beautiful. It can be hard to like let go of control of things, but um, just trust that as long as you've done the right interview process, you know it's a good fit, the vibe is good, then they're going to represent your product. And the best thing too is to have them already take the product um, or do the programs before they start to sell it because then they're just speaking their truth and sharing their experience instead of trying to sell. Yes. Yeah. I like that. Finding the people that can speak the language and then speak the language. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, and it is, uh, it can get kind of overwhelming online, right? There's, you guys have probably noticed companies messaging you in your inbox. You want to be an ambassador. Do you want to do this, that, and the other thing? So if you're starting your own program, I would suggest love on them hard and give them something unique, something special. I just got a request to promote someone's clothing line, but I had to buy the clothing. And I just, I don't know, if you're going to do an ambassador program, do it, like, love on your people hard and give them yes. value. Um, and make sure it's a good fit. So do an interview process or a worksheet um, to make sure it's a good fit so that you don't waste time sending them stuff. And um, also, if you can get them started on something that's minimal cost to you. So you're not just shipping out all this product. Like I wouldn't just ship out a bunch of nourish bars to somebody before they've committed. They'll do a program that's no cost to me and see where it goes from there. So that would be a little tip on if you're going to start your own ambassador program or your own uh, team for your product. Beautiful. Um, so as we said, you got, you're a coach to coaches and I know that I'm someone that I totally trust what you have to say. And I always look forward to our talks and I'm like asking you things. <laughs> and so who is your main coach and how has this mentor helped you evolve your coaching and your business to what it is now? I would have to give the hat to Leanne Jacobs. So Leanne Jacobs is one of my mentors for the past two years, and her whole concept is beautiful money. Hey, Scott, give us some hearts. Give us some love. Um, <laughs> like a reunion. Right? Yeah. So Leanne Jacobs, hands down, um, I've had lots of mentors. She, for sure, um, what I got the most out of her um, offering. So she has a free podcast. If you're in my free community group, work smarter, not harder, you go to the pinned post and you're actually going to get a free course with, um, her book, beautiful money. I am a complete love ambassador of her brand. So for me, it's really easy to be an affiliate for her because I've just, I've gone through the process and I just share my experience. So hands down Leanne Jacobs through private, um, mastermind groups through her podcast, listening to her podcast, um, reading her book, listening to her audio, beautiful money is her message. And with that, it's really owning a business. 20% is systems and like computer work and creating it all. 80% is mindset. And without her, um, basically that audio playing in my head, I probably would have given up. Um, I also do want to give a shout out to James Wedmore. He has this, uh, um, audio. It's called 77 business affirmations. I listened to that every day when I was quitting my day job just to reaffirm. <laughs> right. So those two for sure. Mind your business podcast, James Wedmore and right, that's it. yeah, those two by far. And, um, come join me in work smarter, not harder. It's my free community group. I have both those links in the pinned post. So that's on Facebook. Um, and I always share their stuff and you can look on your podcast app too. Both of them have podcasts. Yeah. Um, so you are definitely, I'm sure Leanne's ideal coach to coach when you came to her. So who is your ideal coach that you would like to work with to see coming to you? You, my friend. So it's the business owner who is ready to grow. They're eager. They've been in business. They have a sense of what it is like, the hardships, the, you know, the growth, and they are kind of sick and tired of doing it as a hobby. They're ready to go full tilt in 90 days. Um, so that would be my ideal client. An existing health coach with a business has dabbled in it and is sick of doing it as a hobby and they want to take it full time and are not nervous to go. I shouldn't say not. Everyone's nervous to go live, but they're willing to perhaps go live, do video to expand their reach. And really, um, I say health coaches cause that's what I was so I can easily relate. Um, 
but in a sense, it's more of the online, it's more of the it's business owner who is passionate and ready to grow. Yeah. Beautiful. And I, I, the health coaches is my experience, but I do have a really wonderful client right now who she, her product is a, to save the bees. So in a sense, it's she's not a health coach, but she's still in this, like, let's be awesome. Um, I just wrote out deal client, um, when I was in Florida and one of the characteristics was they're busy being awesome. And the reason for that is I really coach on just share what you're doing and then it doesn't become a job. It's your lifestyle. Like you do, you share your juicing, you share your lifestyle. And then all of a sudden people want to be a part of it and it's not extra work for you. So yeah, that's busy being awesome. They want to grow. They're sick of doing their business as a side hustle and um, they're eager to grow because the reward working with people like you who are like passionate, they're ready to grow. They're going to do the work is so rewarding. It's like, I don't have to worry about them failing. I know you guys are going to succeed because of that personality. So that being said, be very clear on who you want to work with and don't be afraid to say no. Um, I said no to two people. So that would have been three grand. I said no to this past couple of weeks, but then the right ones came in and now I'm working with the right client rather than just making a decision from a place of, Oh, that's good money. Um, Awesome. For me, like that used to never even be an option. I'm like, well, I'll just say yes to everyone and everything because it's here. So it got brought to me for a reason. And now I'm like, boundaries are key and the more clear, the better. So that's awesome way to incorporate that into your business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you really, when you say no to things that are still good, they're good opportunities, but it creates that space for the perfect ones and the great ones. Otherwise you live in this zone of, okay, this fine, this, oh, everything's good. But that's these high achievers like yourself, like you don't want to live that way. You want to live great and you want to live even higher. So in order to do that, it's hard, but you do have to say no to things that complete alignment. And, um, it really is time after time. It, reaffirms it in my life. So I'm um, happy to hear you're doing that. And I'm excited to see the magic that's going to come in from it. Um, and what's a session look like when working with you for coaching or the lady with saving the bees? Like, what's it look like when someone comes to you? What's the initial start? And is it a half hour, an hour? Or what's kind of the process like? Yeah, so I do free 25-minute interviews or consults when people are interested in joining my 90-day growth plan because it's really important to me to to know if, it, if it's a good fit for them. Um, my main offer is, is a 90-day growth plan. So we walk through four steps. Upon purchase, they get a welcome worksheet, which walks them through questions. So a good coach will ask you the right questions. They're not going to train you or teach you or tell you what to do because – especially high achievers, business owners, we don't want to be told what to do. We want our greatness to come out. So through this four-step process, I have the appropriate worksheet so that it gives the client the space to, um, we figure out their greatness. So it's really easy. It's broken down into four steps. Um, the first one's clearing clutter, getting rid of things that are good to make room for the magic that's about to happen. And then we walk through the 90 days. Some coaches go through all four steps in the first month because they're gung-ho and ready to go. Some, we take the full 90 days um, and launching a specific product at the end, creating that desired income. So really quick, step one, clear the clutter. Step two, niche down. So getting specific. You're no longer a yoga teacher, a dietitian, a nutritionist. We get specific. Who do you help exactly? And number three, we set up a financial action plan because we have these, you know, grandiose ideas, mm -hmm. six figures, seven figures, but what does that look like in a month and how are you going to bring that in? So that's what I mean by setting up this financial action plan. And then the step four is the fun part, which a lot of us just don't do. We get into this content creation mode, we're creative people, we have these amazing products, and then that's where it stops. So this mm -hmm. last step is actually asking for the sale and creating your launch. So um, 10 to 14 days, we go hard, we sell out of your signature product that we've created. And that is the difference because if you can relate, we have all these, all these ideas. I've been stuck in content creation mode for years and don't ask for the sale or you don't buy ask and sell. All that means is sharing, sharing your expertise, sharing your value. And then 
telling people and you actually do your people a disservice if you don't offer them something or if there's nothing extra for them to buy because people want the next step. You go to a talk, you're going to want to buy that person's book or at least have the option to go to the podcast. So um, that's the missing piece that people often get nervous or they try a little bit and fail. So they quit. So um, that's really what it looks like. And there's uh, video coaching throughout the 90 days, unlimited email access. And when I've asked clients what they've appreciated the most, it's the unlimited access. It gives them that confidence that no matter where they're at, no matter what piece of content they're going to give out, I'm going to be there supporting them, telling them if it's going to work or not, and really just like lifting them higher. So I've, I've gotten that feedback that that um, support and knowing that, yes, you can make five grand a month. This is possible. Let's figure out how. Let's work backwards and make it happen. Yeah. Um, so that's what it looks like. It's a process. There's one-on-one, um, you know, it's, it's a process. You sell a transformation. You don't sell. It comes with this and this and this and this. You sell. You're going to be able to quit your day job after 90 days and do your business full time. You're going to be able to make your ideal income, whether that's three or five grand a month um, or 10. So that's what I offer is this transformation. And I love the 90 days because it's enough time, but it's it's not too much. Right. Like, yeah, yeah. It's like- and not too scary like if you're like you can quit your job in two weeks someone would be like what but three yeah. months you probably can so and I like the wording I was listening to um like this five minute video about doing courses online and how just changing the name of them will you'll be able to ch- pay more money or charge more for it and it'll mean more to people and so I like that whole in 90 days you can quit your day job and like live the life you actually want to live so it's like you're so confident in it that you're proclaiming it in the statement of the title and it's not like wishy-washy mm-hmm. it's not like, oh well you could do this or this it's just like you're proclaiming what can happen so i really like that yeah and that's when it becomes um you have to be so specific and so kind of picky on which clients you take on because yeah that's a pretty, right but i have full confidence if they fit everything in my ideal client and they're ready to grow they've been doing their business all of these things so it's really easy for me to tell on a 20 minute call if the program's perfect or not um mm-hmm. that's that's really important if you do have a pretty big you know result or transformation that you're offering is to be picky on who you work with um, and to really pick the right ones. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'd like to come back to when you were talking about, um, that you are a brand and you taught me that right from the beginning. So that's actually allowed me to be more comfortable in sharing my lifestyle or getting on social media more or making videos like this. So what are something that what are something or things that you do daily to make sure you are your brand and that you're you're your best self, your high vibing self. So it shares, shows and shines in your business. Yeah. And that's, um, 80% of the work. So a lot of the time when I'm working with clients, it's, you know, figuring out how they feel and maybe before they sell, it's getting the vibration high or all that means is feeling good. So, Um, if you're not feeling good, your job is not to sell. Your job is to do what you need to do to feel good. So whether that's going to yoga, having a bath, um, anything that raises your vibration that makes you feel good, um, hanging out with your dog. So that's where, um, my personal rules and routines and boundaries, um, would be a morning routine. So before I look at my phone, I have kind of an eight to eight rule that just works with my bedtime and my time zone. But basically the first hour of waking and the hour or two before bed, no phone, no interaction. That's my time to recharge, to really set myself up for a good sleep. Um, so my morning routine would consist of anything that's getting me present in the moment. It would be, um, audios, Abraham Hicks, affirmations, 77 business affirmations. Um, I heard this year that 
it's unrealistic to wake up and just think you're going to have all this energy. We have to create it. So what do you do to create that energy or to get yourself in the right vibe to have these conversations, to talk to your clients, to attract your ideal clients? So audios are amazing because they're no extra work. You basically get to soak it up and you can just lie there if you want. Um, everything from audios to juices to um, apple cider vinegar first thing in the morning. I'm huge on morning and evening routines. It doesn't have to be an hour. It can be five minutes as long as you're doing something for you before you try to serve others. And I love the evening one because what we do in our sleep is super powerful. And if you don't set your, yourself up properly, you're going to be stressed in your sleep and you're going to be subconsciously thinking of what you have to do and all of these things. So just as we can spiral into kind of the stress and the negative, we can use this to our advantage with human behavior and do things that are good before bed. And then all night long, you're going to basically soak in that goodness and wake up feeling awesome and wake up with more energy. And you've actually worked during your sleep to the, to, um, create that good energy or that good vibration. Your advantage basically is to be it. Yeah, so that um, is non-negotiable for me as well as um, I just pay attention. If I don't feel good, I'm not going to have calls with people. I'm not going to go to networking events. And yeah. I'm gonna, And I often joke like, oh, heading to yoga, time to go to work because I'll come out of yoga and a sale would have happened. Or um, it's also figuring out where do you vibe the highest. I don't vibe high at networking events. So I just don't go to them. I do everything in my zone of genius. So it's about experimenting. Life is an experiment and paying attention to where you feel good. Where was your last sale? How did you attract your last ideal client? And repeating that instead of trying to fit the mold and do what people tell you you should be doing. Um, Because as soon as you do that, then you just vibe low and your business is going to... Yes, totally. Um, what's the best place for someone to contact you or to follow you or to get started? Is it through Instagram, your website, all of the above? Yeah. Um, so my Instagram account, the one that I'm streaming live on now is built for health coaches. So information for health coaches, um, as well as work smarter, not harder. It's a free community group on Facebook that I do lots of trainings in. We sell, support each other, promote each other's businesses. Um, those would be the two best places. Send me a, com- a message or a comment below if you can't find the links. And, um, on my Instagram here, if you go to my bio link, you can click there and that will connect you with all the free groups and free trainings. There's a free training called um, Four Steps to Go from Burnout to Success. You can check that out. And if you also want a handy dandy tip for Instagram for linking things up, head to my bio link. It's um, you can scroll to the bottom and set up your own account, your own web page for free. Um, it's pretty cool. So basically, you never have to change your Instagram link again. You can have on there your free offers as well as your paid offers. It's just one place where people can kind of check you out, see if your extra offers, your free stuff, your free groups, your paid offers are what they need. Um, so you can check that out in my bio link, scroll to the bottom and set up your own for free. Awesome. I love that. So any final words of wisdom or tips or anything we haven't touched on that you'd like to share with the community? Um, I find it so beneficial, um, to hear from you. So I did an interview series with all the health coaches that went through my program and the amount of stuff I learned from them, as well as other people got to hear their experiences. I would like to learn or hear from you. So although you haven't done the 90 day process, you know, my coaching style, we've, um, I've, we've had conversations. So I'd like to hear from you. What would be one key thing that you've taken out of our conversations and applied to your business and you've seen success? Um, so I'd like to ask you that, and then I'll just answer this question. Nicole says, can you repeat the podcast? So two main podcasts that I love would be mind your business podcast and beautiful money. Awesome. All right. So that's what I would want to hear from you is just something out of our conversations that you've actually applied to your business and you've seen growth because of it. And this growth doesn't always have to be, um, monetary. It can be growth within yourself as the business owner. So something that, um, you have 
heard from either some of my trainings or our one-on-one -on -one calls, let us know something that you've applied to your business and you've seen success in. Um, I'm like, I probably could think of like three to 10 things, <laughs> but I'll maybe stick to three things. <laughs> and honestly, that's the most useful is people hearing what you've done because yes. I can all that totally. I want, that experience that people want to hear. Yeah. Yeah. So one for sure was the, like that you are your brand. So when I was like really committing more to yoga now and lady now, my other business, I was off social media totally, and I was like, okay, I know that this is where, like, the people are at, so I just need to get back to where the people are because I need to reach more people, and at the time, before that, I got off social media because it was just getting to be so much. It was getting so personal, and that's why I got off, just to have, like, a break, and it was really nice, so I was almost, like, scared to go back. The same as, like, when you're almost too busy like saying yes to the wrong things and you're almost scared that you're going to get too busy again. But then you've taught me about like the boundaries and that you are your brand. So going back into social media and like the outreach and working more for my own business, I felt more confident in knowing that I was going to call in the right people, even to my social media. It was almost like I didn't think I could control it or something so it'll be best to avoid it but if i'm clear in my intention and what i want to bring in and where i'm going i can control that energetically so that like i've shared with you before i'm like well i have all these ideas and i see it all and i just want it to be right now so the patience of the journey and to get the content produced and then those things will come instead of just getting caught up in that overwhelm so those would definitely be the things that you've taught me and that you're always so willing to share i also just love that about you and have taken that into my business too of not selling it's the sharing and being trustworthy and kind of like you're being a friend to everyone so once people trust you and know that there's value in your work they're more likely to want more of you naturally mm -hmm. so from you amazing and it really is it's um you know people will want more if they like know and trust you um and then a little tweak on that is to make sure you're still in um, acting as the authority so you're basically people will watch if you're educating or entertaining them and um, they will want your information if you have value to share. And that's all that it is. It's the law of reciprocity. You know, if I'm going to buy you a coffee this week, you're going to buy me one next week. It's just what we do as humans. So um, feel comfortable sharing your best stuff, sharing all your best stuff, and you're still going to have people, you're going to have more people coming and wanting to buy. So if you're confused on what to share for free, what to sell, you share the pieces and then you sell the system. Um, and honestly, the, if you look at the big leaders, the people you're following, they share a ton of free stuff. So yeah. don't be your best stuff. And as long as it's valuable content or you're entertaining, um, you're good to go. And make sure always to post from a place of, does my ideal client want to see this? Not, do I want to see this? Because you got to... Um, Right now, I'm my ideal client, you know, three years ago. So I can easily talk to me three years ago. But say you are not your ideal client. You really have to get into their shoes. And every time you post, is this going to serve them? Is Are they going to want to hear this? And as long as you think of them first, it's all about them. And it's not busting your ass and being, you know, spreading your boundaries too thin to um, do what's right for the customer. But it's just creating your messaging. Is this what they want to hear? And then share, 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 and people will want more. Beautiful. So I guess that's everything. Awesome. So for you, my friend, this is your main account for yoga. So what would be, um, if people want more of you, cause on this, this is getting posted on my page as well. So if there's people on my page and they want it more from you what do you offer on your page here and how what will they get by coming and following you um over here on yoga now 
Awesome. So I have this page and on YouTube, I have some free videos. They're like older ones, but I'm working on making new ones and sharing more meditation and content on there. I also have a website, yoganow.ca. So there's like blog posts, there's resources of other people that just do great work. And it's not just that you have to go to them in person. A lot of their healing modalities they can do through Skype or anywhere in the world too. So there's a little bit of everything on there. I'm also starting to focus yoga now a little bit into the schools as well as the lifestyle. So I wanted to create a place where our youth and the kids and parents feel comfortable kind of sending more emotional intelligence and the word resilience into their lives and into the school system. One of my friends is actually a principal here in New Brunswick. So when I told her about how I've been doing this for three, four years and that I wanted to do this mainly full time with yoga now. She's like, well, our budget actually has room for wellness grants now and anything that promotes resilience. So I redid a letter and sent it out to the school. So if anyone in the New Brunswick area would like yoga in their schools, feel free to contact me. But my page online in general is I don't know, other word other than safe or welcoming for youth and kids too. So it's not just like adult content. It's something that they can start early to implement into their lives because they're almost, I don't want to say overlooked, but it's almost like, oh, well, when they get older, they'll figure it out or, you know, this isn't the end of the world. They will have a whole life to live, but for them right now, this really is the end of the world to them. Like where they're at right now in schools is very emotional. Some are very stressed, very they feel pressured. Um, also more lonely where there is so much texting and phones and disconnection. It's a way to reconnect either to each other or to something bigger and provide direction. So there's a little bit of everything, but it's definitely a lifestyle. There's recipes, there's vegan photos, there's tribe, there's love. We have two step kids and I'm in love. So there's a little bit of everything, but you can share the lifestyle and my social media page or online. Awesome. And I think that for kids and, and uh, parents with kids in their teens, it's really important to have the right mentors. So I had a conversation with a lady yesterday and she's asking me, Steph, do you know a dietitian I can take my son to for eating? And I kind of said, no, I don't think that will help. Perhaps he can go to a yoga class with a male instructor or a fitness class with a male instructor. I know Scott is a mentor to so many young men and they do what Scott does. Drink, drink appropriate water, eat vegetables. So it's about having these mentors. So in a sense, your page is ideal for um, women with kids in their teens so they can get their kids to follow you, right? That sounds that would be a good fit as well as young women who are um, seeking that love and support, that community and guidance, right? Yeah, totally. Awesome. Well, big love here from Halifax, Nova Scotia. And you oh, are in love you. So gratitude to the internet. I love that we can do this. And um, I look forward to more chats with you. Um, that's all I got. All right. Love you. And I'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much. Yeah. And I questions, just reach out to us. Sounds good. Yeah. Bye.